in today's video we're going to be diving into our updated winter forecast for the winter of 2024 to 2025 going over the temperature forecast precipitation forecast snowfall forecast and the exciting overall forecast before we dive into things be sure to subscribe hit the like button and leave a comment down below with your location and i will be giving you guys custom forecasts for your location in case you're curious as to more details for your specific area now before we dive into things be sure to check out prestige weather where we're going to be doing a 99 cent for your first month deal once more it's only five bucks typically but we're doing only a dollar for your first month that's an automatic discount so you don't even need to put a code in we're doing a september photo contest in there where the winner receives 50 dollars. so be sure to check out all of that on your top right corner of your screen below this video and get signed up today at that killer price we have just unveiled brand new graphics to help deliver extremely informative and efficient forecasts for your business breaking down the snowfall forecast timing forecast and risk level for your specific location our clients have saved time and money using our services to make critical decisions gone are the headaches of tirelessly hunting down information across the internet prestige weather is here to help you and your business be sure to email us at prestigeweather at gmail.com or use the calendly link in the pinned comment down below to book a meeting with me immediately we offer consulting calls texts and emails catered to your exact location of need we will be on standby during your job or event and give you updates from start to finish we also offer long range medium range and short range forecasts we can help with rainfall and snowfall forecasts plus the timing of onset and ending which is so important we pride ourselves on being highly flexible and we're always Always willing to deliver on your specific needs put a meteorologist in your pocket so you no longer have to guess what the weather will do let's go ahead and dive into things and we're taking a look first things first at the temperature anomalies we can see that above average temperatures are expected out west this is actually going to be a massive update i should disclaim that uh, we've spent i think this is about over a month since our previous update maybe a bit more so this has definitely uh, been a long time coming we've had a big update here originally we anticipated more of a la nina right now as it stands i am leaning much more closer to a neutral and so if not a very very weak la nina so keep that in mind uh, i wanted to mention as well that we are going to be doing a winter live stream here over the coming days i think around october 1st i would say is what i'm aiming for we're going to be doing a live stream within prestige weather so again if you check that out it's only 99 cents your first month we're going to be doing a full q a breakdown of the upcoming winter and i want to discuss further into those uh, things like the neutral enso and how that plays a role you know the pacific ocean and the atlantic ocean and the current and expected changes out there that are going to impact things this upcoming winter so if you're interested in that be sure to check it out for that great price today we take a look at these temperatures out west and it is a bit warmer i think my previous update we did have below normal temperatures expected throughout a lot of the northwest you can see i went ahead and added them to the above average temperatures this specifically has a lot to do with that neutral enso expectation or at least a very weak la nina compared to what we originally anticipated to be possible i do expect a little bit less activity moving through this area which will mean more sun more warmth and overall a little bit more above average temperatures than we originally anticipated let's go ahead and add a second layer here uh, we're gonna have a lot more on the way of course as far as layers and areas of cold and you know the precipitation it's gonna look far different than your previous update so keep that in mind we do have this area where we're more confident in the warmth and that's gonna sit mostly over the southwest of this area so for a lot of california actually pretty much all of california there most of nevada there most of arizona and a little bit of southwestern new mexico we expect these areas to be pretty far above average as far as temperatures are concerned and for those of you that watch the videos a lot you would know that this spells pretty much primarily a positive pna look when we have these warmer temperatures out west and we're going to get into it in a second but this typically would cause arctic blasts into the central and eastern states as this warmth kind of pushes up the west coast even up into canada it causes all of that cold to come back down on the eastern end of things so let's dive into the below normal temperatures and as a result of that positive pna we obviously expect below average temperatures in the east 
Now, a neutral Ento is pretty much best case scenario for cold and snow lovers historically. Uh, you know, oftentimes people are like, it's warm in El Ninos and La Ninas. When do we ever get cold and snowy winters on average? And neutral Ento, in my opinion, is really the answer to that when we end up in the middle. Um, and it's about a one degree range, either negative half a degree or positive half a degree. So a whole degree range in the middle of those two, both El Nino and La Nina, that ends up being a neutral Enzo or La Nada would be the official name. Uh, and this really leads towards less of an impact from that El Nino or La Nina, obviously. We oftentimes end up with very cool winters in the East during these winters. And some of the nicer ones in the past have been neutral Enzo's. Uh, and typically, we can get some of those nor'easters like you see in an El Nino while still seeing more of the cold that you would expect to see more so in a neutral Enzo or weaker La Nina. So you get kind of the best of both worlds here, and oftentimes we end up with some great snowstorms, really cold periods, and that's kind of what this forecast is based on. So below average temperatures basically from the plains eastward, we actually have a second layer of these below average temperatures as well. This is going to reach all the way down to the Gulf Coast, as far west as Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, the Dakotas there, and then everywhere eastward all the way to the east coast as you can see. We even have a third layer where we're the highest confident in this below normal temperature area, and this won't reach all the way down to the uh, Gulf Coast as you know, if we do end up in a weaker La Nina, there could be some extra pushback at times of some golf warmth, which we oftentimes see in those La Nina winters. So we're holding that back a little bit. Uh, I think I'm the most confident for the upper Midwest here. Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, some of the deeper south, not too far, but pretty deep. Uh, a lot of the mid-Atlantic into the northern southeast there, and then the northeast as well. These areas I'm the most confident in those below average temperatures. And again, this would be pretty congruent with a neutral Enso. So some changes there, not the most different that we've ever seen, but the precipitation is going to look far different. So let's dive into this. And you can see that we now expect below average precipitation further north up the west coast, even touching into Oregon, and much further east, even into Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri here. Oftentimes these neutral Ensos end up seeing below average precipitation across the south central here, as well as the southwest sometimes even the northwest here i don't expect it to be like that i think we should still see a pretty decent amount of storms heading over top across the pacific northwest into the northern rockies here uh, that is my current expectations as far as second layers are concerned here's that first one for california nevada arizona and that's pretty much on par with what we were already calling for but we have this second one here over our new area, and this is going to be for New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, where, again, very, very common to see drier conditions in these areas with conditions like we're currently seeing. So that's a big change from our previous winter forecast. And another big change is going to be where we expect those above average precipitation areas and also how far above average, because we originally expected pretty far above average here for the Pacific Northwest. As you can see, they're very neutral here across uh, western Washington, northwestern Oregon. Very near normal is kind of what we're anticipating, or equal chances in other words. It could go either way. We do expect quite a bit of storms to move through Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. Uh, this area in general should see some storms. Uh, as we see a ridge over here and a diving jet stream through here, we could see some clipper-type systems, a little bit west-based, moving through this area. There could also be some uh, Pacific Northwest storms moving through at times. This should be an active area for storms, in my opinion. Not only that, like I said, nor'easters are kind of back on the cards, looking a little bit more likely than, our, than in our previous update. We expect these up-the-coast storms to be possible. And this can come in really two or maybe even three types of ways. I'll kind of go over them. But sometimes you see them more over land here like this. We could see this. And in this case, you would expect to see chances of snow on the western ends of things. Very rarely, obviously, for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, but it does happen. Primarily, we would be talking about Tennessee northward in here for the best chance of snowfall in that more inland scenario. So Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia, western Pennsylvania, and western New York. But we also expect there to be a pretty good chance of seeing some offshore storms where the East Coast is going to need to be on high alert for potential snowfall. Uh, and also, we could see some storms, a little bit less than typical, kind of meandering their way from kind of the Midwest down into the Mid-Atlantic. And oftentimes, these can either move up inland 
or from that point head offshore and again bring potential snowfall to the coast. That would be called a Miller B type nor'easter. Now we actually have a second layer of this, not a third. We're not entirely the most confident here in the precipitation forecast. But this area further south, I mean, we really frequently see in neutral ENSOs these storms moving through this area over and over and over again. Don't even be surprised if we see some southern slider type storms, which would look like this. Again, on the northern and western ends, you would expect the chance of snowfall here. And on the southern ends, we would expect mostly rainfall, so near the coastal areas and to the south. That is the types of storms we could end up seeing really, really set up over these areas with this current precipitation projections again going to be breaking this down within the prestige weather community so go ahead and join if you do want to be a part of that live q a coming up approximately around october 1st there will be updates in there but it will be within the next 20 days or so so if you do subscribe now you will gain access to that so be sure to check it out again top right corner of your screen description pinned comment you can find it everywhere as we just dive into the snowfall projections, obviously this is going to be based primarily on the precipitation forecast. Also, the temperatures do play a role here as well. Um, this is just your snowfall chance forecast. That's an important disclaimer because typically when people make snowfall forecasts, they're actually trying to project if you're going to see above average snowfall or not. And, and I think that's a little tough to do. Sometimes the, the cold will be there, but not when the storm hits. You guys probably have lived that out before where, you know, it's like it's been cold for a whole week. Why did it become warm right as the precipitation moved in? And that's just the way the weather works. It's all kind of a dynamic ecosystem moving parts. It's just so many dynamics at play. It's so hard to predict if things are going to line up properly. So that's why we do a snowfall chance. Your, your chances can be increased and it might not pan out. It might pan out, but your chances will either be below average or above average based on these projections. So that's important to note. Also, you know, Louisiana or better yet LA uh, here, how, what are the actual chances of them seeing snowfall, right? Maybe like one in 500 years they might see snowfall, maybe even further below normal than that. Well, they're in the below average snowfall chance, so it might be, you know, one in 750 chances here or something along those lines. So this does not mean that these areas expect snowfall, but there is nothing new under the sun and there is technically a chance. It's just lower than that, uh, the chance that is already extremely low. We do expect below average chance here in a lot of these drier, warmer areas that we expect this upcoming winter. Obviously, there will be some cooler air here across Texas and Oklahoma. However, it will be quite dry, so we do expect below average chance for all of these areas here. We do have a particularly far below average chance here in this southwest corridor. You know, the, the La Nina or perhaps a colder end, neutral unso is what we would call it. Um, doesn't really matter. You know, I know it's confusing, but... Basically, in other words, these colder phases of the ENSO, which stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation, lead to below average precipitation in the southwest typically and neutral to above average in the northwest here. So that is another reason why we're seeing these drier below average snowfall amounts in the southwest uh, in this forecast. For the above average amounts, we do expect above average from your Rockies, particularly the northern Rockies into the northern plains as we will have more cold likely more clipper systems moving through these areas. And we should see frequent small to medium snowstorms. Obviously the Northern Rockies is gonna be a little bit bigger than that oftentimes, especially like I said, if we do get a couple of Pacific storms moving in, we could see some bigger snowstorms oftentimes as they tend to see. That is why we have a second layer of the above average snowfall chance here for the central and Northern Rockies there of the United States. No surprise either that with the colder air, the above average chance at uh, nor'easters, we do actually expect an above average chance of snowfall along all of your eastern states, starting with Louisiana and Arkansas, eastward towards the coast and all the way northward up to New England. Again, it's just a snowfall chance. This doesn't mean that I think New Orleans and Miami are going to see snowfall, but it might be a one in you know 500 chance. Again, maybe like 1 in 300 chance. It's still very low odds, but those odds are technically greater than his, you know they typically are on the average season. So keep that in mind. We actually do have a second layer here for the East Coast. I really, really feel like if we do see a neutral end, so this is going to dramatically increase the chances of snowfall versus your averages. So with the nor'easters, the colder air, that is going to combine for above average chance here from the, the Gulf Coast all the way up the Mid-Atlantic and into the Northeast. 
Again, doesn't mean that all of these areas will see snowfall or even have a greater chance than not to see snowfall. But this does mean that they do have a greater chance than historically what's average. So keep that in mind. Now for the very exciting overall forecast, here it is guys, stormy across the Northwest still is my current expectations. Obviously what's typical for them is stormy and I do expect a typical winter for them as far as precipitation is concerned, AKA stormy. More snow across a lot of your Cascades into the Rockies here as we do see above average snowfall for some of these areas. Also a little bit colder maybe in these Rockies. So definitely more snow than typical could be on the cards, especially for the Northern Rockies. Warm and dry across your Southwest corridor here is going to be the trend. Again, typical in these colder phases of the Enso, which is what we expect. So I very much so expect a warmer and drier winter for the Southwest. More dry across the four corner states into the central, south central states there. Uh, not necessarily warmer than normal and maybe even below normal for Texas and Oklahoma. But drier, I think, is going to be the most dramatically felt impact here. Cold and snowy to the east of the Rockies here in this blue area is currently what I'm projecting. That already is what I was projecting, so nothing much changing there. Polar vortex could make an appearance. These neutral winters, neutral and so winters, do tend to bring these about, so... Doesn't mean it has to happen, but the chances are elevated for a polar vortex event or two this upcoming winter. Arctic blasts to the south of there are inherently going to be a risk as well as we see frequent cold air masses moving in from the Arctic regions, aka Arctic blasts. I think this is going to be a common sight here this upcoming winter. Uh, winter battle zone here in the lighter pink. What that means is, you know, rain, snow, ice, sleet. It's all going to be possible. It's all going to happen from time to time. And typically, you're not going to see an all snow event in here. If you do see a winter weather event, it is going to be a mixed bag event, a very messy storm. I hate those personally. We see a lot of them here in Virginia. But, you know, it's better than nothing, right, for you cold and snow lovers. That is what we expect a lot of, if any. Uh, major storms across the southeast is now a big change from our previous forecast and now looks pretty likely, especially the closer to a neutral wind, neutral and so winter we get. Major storms coming off the Gulf of Mexico could bring a far above average rainfall, maybe even some severe weather events there across the southeast and really across a lot of the Gulf Coast there. Lake effect snowfall around the Great Lakes could be a common sight. We obviously had a pretty hot winter or a pretty hot summer, better yet. We had a pretty uh, warm fall at times. These waters have stayed pretty far above normal across the Great Lakes. And I feel like November, December, maybe even a bit of January could feature a whole lot of lake effect snowfall if we do get those Arctic air masses moving over that very, very warm lake water. Definitely could be a common sight. Worst of winter for the interior east. Again, some of those storms may track inland up the east coast. These areas should still see primarily snowfall as the type of precipitation and that would really, really spell uh, the worst of winter. I mean, unless you're in the mountaintops of the Rockies, obviously, or the Cascades, that's going to be the most large, widespread area seeing the worst of winter here, especially in the east. Huge snowstorms could happen along the east coast. Of course, they're always going to be hit or miss. Again, all those ingredients have to come together. But that is going to be on the cards this year and something that we're going to be actively watching for to potentially happen this upcoming winner anyway guys thank you for watching again be sure to subscribe like and leave that comment down below with your location so that you can get that custom forecast be sure to check out prestige weather as well in the description and pinned comment down below be sure to subscribe we do upload every single day we are going to be doing more wintertime videos so keep that in mind probably one maybe even two more winter forecasts if they need to be updated or tweaked at all, we will be showing more of those. We also uploaded our snowfall forecast that you guys can check out today on the channel. It's one of our most recent, very popular videos where we went over the actual amounts of snowfall that you typically see in a wintertime and went over those kind of uh, analogs as far as uh, the, the compared to normal amounts that we do expect. So be sure to check that video out as well. Anyway, hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.